Show Me China has invited two sociologists and a scientist to join an experimental film to find out how deputies to the National People's Congress work. Firstly, each of them focuses on one NPC deputy and browses relevant stories and information online. And then they can let the production team know about which perspective they are interested in. Then the crew will set out for filming. Finally, when the three mini films finished, the sociologists and the scientists will watch the films together and share their film reviews. Why did they join this project? And what did they find out about these MPC deputies? This is the Great Wall Friendship Award. The sociologist Dr. Mark Levine has been in China for 17 years. He's a holder of a Chinese green card and loves to share his China stories through his music and books. He takes great interest in life experience of Hao Rong, an NPC deputy and panda biologist. Personally accepted responsibility for trying to help explain China to people from other countries around the world. Most non-Chinese people have no understanding of how the Chinese government runs. And they can't understand how can this be something that accurately reflects the real problems and real needs of people of China. So I figured this is a wonderful opportunity to give me a chance to uh, broaden my explanations. Joshua Dominic, originally from the United States, is currently 43 years old, 22 years of which he has spent in Beijing. He is a professional translator with a degree in Chinese studies focusing on sociology. He would do some research on bus driver Wang Yan, who is also an NPC deputy. When you first called me, I wasn't really sure exactly what was going on. Um, you said a bus driver is a national representative, and it was it didn't quite match to me um, because many of the politicians from where I come from are professionals. That's their job. So they don't have time for another job. Um, so I thought, you know, when you mentioned this to me, first it was, how can this be? Um, and it was interesting just to kind of, that's what attracted me uh, to actually explore what that means and how that works in China. He asked the shooting crew to arrange a video chat with her as speaks fluent Mandarin. The shooting crew agreed on this idea. Dr. Marco Gabello has been in China for 10 years. He is from Bolivia. As a senior researcher in quantum physics and spin tronics, he tries to find out the application of science in the advance of society in China, and he thinks he can find the answer from the story of Guo Jianhua, a film productionist and also an NPC deputy. The history of Ms. Guo is quite interesting. She, she fought for many years um, to take the, the science and, and help many communities to produce peanuts, relieve these people from poverty. I would like to know more on how she did this, and what kind of model she implemented. In 1994, Horong graduated and landed a job at the Chengdu Giant Panda Breeding Research Base. Due to her outstanding achievements, Horong became a deputy to the 11th, 12th, and 13th National People's Congress. You had to do much studying and reading to become an NPC member. Did you have any training in this? 开始的时候,其实那个第一次当人大代表的时候,因为我从来没有做过代表的角色,是一点懵,还不知道代表具体该做什么东西,因为是一个国家的各种报告的,比如政府的工作报告,高法和高检的一个报告,还有就是国家的
。然后刚开始我是参加了好多次，然后第一个是通过参加那个培训来学习了解，第二个的话其实是向身边的一些老代表学习。How did you become a member of the NPC? 我是通过四川省的人大代表选举出来的，但他选举的话，他对他就需要有一个广泛性，要有科技界的，要有基层的，包括来自最基层的那个农村的农民，还有第一线的工人，还有第一线的知识分子，还有对女性的比例，他是有要求的。In 2017, she put forward a proposal for the construction of a giant panda national park. On October 12th, 2021, China officially instituted the country's first batch of national parks, including the Giant Panda National Park. Upon hearing the news, Hu Rong felt that her deputy ship had not been in vain. What impressed you most? Well, I, when she, particularly when she was talking about the. Makeup and the nature of the National People's Congress. We have all these pictures, and she was talking about it needs to be an accurate representation of the whole population of uh, of the province that she's coming from, from Sichuan Province, and she had uh, Chinese ethnic minorities and even migrant workers. So I think that was the most impressive thing because it's in a lot of places the representatives come from a much narrower group of people. So, and I think this was particularly important mm -hmm. for people to understand. She talked about, you know, there's a problem. She writes it down immediately, mm -hmm. and that uh, she has shelves of books, bookcases behind her, and some of which are, I'm sure, about uh, the pandas and the scientific research, and some of them were clearly about the legal process. She, uh, she had a massive amount of work to do and research on on both of those areas. So yeah. I think I understand that much better. Hello. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Yeah. Beautiful day, huh? Yes, yeah, wonderful day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we prepared everything for you guys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to it. Wang Yan is a grassroots NPC deputy. Wang Yan has an excellent driving record over the years, with zero accidents and zero complaints against her, and was deemed most beautiful female driver by the Tianjin Women's Federation. Hello, Wang Lao. 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 能够把老百姓的心声带到大会堂，我们反映了人民的愿望，实现人民的期盼，我觉得群众就会越来越信任你，处处细心，处处留心观察。When cars queue up at the toll station, traffic becomes backed up and congested for a long time, making transport inconvenient. At the first plenary session of the 13th National People's Congress. Wang Yan submitted a proposal to remove some toll stations from the Beijing Tianjin Hebei Expressway's mainline. In June, the Ministry of Transport invited Wang Yan to participate in a survey on the issue, the result of which led to the proposal being adopted by relevant departments. 接地气，可以听到老百姓的真正的声音，让有的市民都知道哦，是全国人大代表。啊，找位比较方便，有时候会到车队啊，或者会打电话到车队啊。我觉得您可以把您您的这个您的公交车坐大陆人大大家办公室。对，有时市民就说你这个公交车啊，其实就是流动的全国人大代表yeah. But she's really every day on the ground talking to people, which is something that our national representatives don't do mm -hmm. quite that often. Mm -hmm. Unless right. they're trying to get votes. Good morning. What a snowy day, huh? Yeah, good How are you? I'm good. Now the video is ready, and uh, let's watch it. Guo Jinhua, a 68-year-old deputy to the National People's Congress, is also a film projectionist at the age of 23, Guo Jinhua, with her scooter and portable projector, 
has traveled to dozens of villages and has deepened her relationships with villagers. In recent years, Guajinhua has focused on alleviating poverty. Peanuts are one of the main agricultural products of Shangfu District. To help villagers get a better harvest of peanuts, Gua Jinhua contacted the Hunan Film and Television Group to make an educational film. We have a good harvest of peanuts. After watching the film, local farmers learn advanced planting technology joyfully. She is a deputy to the 11th, 12th, and 13th National People's Congress and has earned the title of National Moral Model. Woman 让普通人能够享受文化知识带来的快乐。I think another thing that's very important is how each of them incorporates their role within the NPC into their day-to-day -day work. Yes. It's not a separate, it's, it's a different job, it involves different responsibilities, but they use uh, the arenas and the platforms made available to them uh, the woman on the bus, the bus driver, right? She's got a mobile NPC center, and the woman showing the film is out in the villages, and she's talking to people. People are bringing her problems. She's observing things. So on one level, they're separate, but on the other hand, they're completely integrated. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the same. Because they're in the field, so they can know exactly what other problems that are happening. Right, right. exactly. In, in the U.S., periodically, there are some... Uh, congressional representatives who never go back to their district. Yeah. They just stay in Washington, D.C., even during the holidays, the breaks, yeah. right? And all of their news is coming through media, or it's coming through staff. The design and the implementation of the national park system can be you know, brought from the local to the national and made applicable nationwide. Um, I think that's perfectly in line with, with what I would understand. Talking about the way that we can find those people can represent their community, represent their own people. But giving the ideas and thoughts to the government and the central government's ministry mm -hmm. can collect them and uh, fix the problem. So do you think the whole process is kind of a uh, democracy in China? Well, I think democracy is basically just a way to make sure that people are getting what they want and need you know, how, how problems are solved. Now in China, you know, whether the system is different or not, um, things seem to be working relatively well. I mean, everywhere has issues, but in China, you know, uh, national parks are being approved and constructed. Uh, science is being pushed forward and, you know, people are getting jobs and making families. It seems that, you know, this current structure is, is working quite well from what we've seen so far, so, yeah. It's different than uh, some, many countries are used to, but as Josh says, it seems to be working. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's the most critical thing, mm -hmm. even though it may be different than we're used to. Well, what I can tell you is that maybe uh, all these voices, you know, from different sectors are, are heard by the government. And I think the mission of, of the government is to serve people. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we say that from that perspective, Serving people and doing uh, and, and solving their problems is democracy. Then, then yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Let me add one thing: it's functioning in a beneficial way, and it has been functioning in a beneficial way that's resulted in lots of improvement and advances and gains. Throughout its century of growth, the party is always led, fighting with and for the people under the flag that's red. The progress that we've seen so far is a miracle and yet we can't rest on our laurels we must that not forget. When theory and practice unify 
So much can be achieved And progress can be realized It's so hard to believe We owe this to the teachings Of the CPC That offers hope for everyone Including 